Justice Wright, you, um, along with our Chief Justice, uh, are the only you are the only two, two members who served at the district court. I guess Justice uh, uh, Chief Justice did not serve at the Court of Appeals, so I guess you are the only member of our court that has served at all three levels. If I've and, got that right, and with three different governors. Point. Two, was it two? two was it two. Governor Carlson and Governor Dayton? D Governor Ventura and Dov Governor Dayton. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about, you know, we've, we've got the outline of how it works. Um, what observations you could share with our viewers about the differences between serving at all three of those those levels? Certainly. Thank you. Um, and I should tell our viewers that, that it's important that, that they understand that our full court recognizes that, you know, although we view these as, uh, uh, you know, we... You know, we we are the state Supreme Court, but the reality is for all of us, including those of us who might have legal issues that ourselves might need to be resolved, it's the district court where the heavy lifting goes on. Yes. So tell, tell our viewers a little bit about how you would see that. Well, the district court, uh, a single judge, but so many other people in the court and in the courthouse who make uh, such a difference in the decisional you know, process of the case. And so with the district court judge, um, there may be, if it goes to trial, a jury, and that would be either six or 12 individuals, depending on the nature of the case, who would be helping to decide the facts in a case, um, what actually happened. Um, sometimes the judge is in a position to do that, but many times you have a jury, and many of our, our listeners may have had the opportunity to serve um, uh, on a jury in the course of their lifetimes. It's it's a real honor to do so. It's selected randomly. Um, and I think many people get the best understanding of how our courts work by um, by serving on the jury. And many come into the courtroom uh, with jury duty uh, with some sense of dread. And those who have served always, I always spoke to the jurors at the end of a jury trial, and they always felt so honored to have been involved in the decision-making process in the way that they did. Um, at the trial court, judges are handling both civil and criminal cases. They are um, many times, if it's a criminal case, determining what the appropriate sentence is. We do have sentencing guidelines, and we also have something in, in the criminal cases, and particularly in the felonies, is a, a pre-sentence investigation. And that was always one of those experiences when I read the pre-sentence investigation report that was prepared by our uh, probation officers. Um, I got a better sense of who that person was standing before me. And we all know that individuals are more than um, the one act that brings them into that courtroom. And so it's an opportunity for the court to get enough information to determine, using the sentencing guidelines and the information in that pre-sentence investigation report, what it is um, that would be the appropriate punishment uh, but also the appropriate services many times to provide for rehabilitation, too. Um, moving then to my experience at the trial court, um, I was amazed that um, the parties often were not present there. Um, it was the lawyers who were at the making, Court of Appeals. At the Court of Appeals, right. the, right. the lawyers were making um, the argument, um, as a, and, and the many times. Um, the client, their client, the party who was affected by the case, may be there, but oftentimes they were not. And for me, it was then important when uh, the parties weren't present to recognize again that uh, adage and that real truth that um, Judge Keith impressed upon me, that the law affects real people. And we are governed by the rule of law, but the rule of law really needs to make sense to real people. It needs to be able to account for the human condition. It needs to, um, if it's in a criminal setting, to have some sense of what is appropriate punishment, but also what is appropriate to bring about rehabilitation. And so I marvel, um, first of all, my experience at the trial court, I value heavily. I draw on it every day when I look at um, the files that we have at, at the Supreme Court. But um, 
I also marvel at the um, incredible work that trial court judges do because they really are the people within the community and the people within the court um, room who are sitting as neutrals, rendering important decisions, and then making sure that um, the individuals who are affected by the decision understand uh, what's happening and why it's happening and work to ensure that um, a just result occurs. And you know, picking up on what Justice Wright just said, um, I have never been a district court judge, uh, but of course have in private practice been in the courtroom a lot. Um, I guess the closest uh, to a district court judge I've been is judging high school mock trial, which is a great activity, nowhere near the real consequences that Justice Wright was stating. And what I find most impressive about good district court judges, things are happening fast. This is in real time. You're making decisions in, in the heat of a trial, which is one of the, can be one of the most heated human experiences uh, that you can have. And uh, so you need to know the rules, you need to know the law, you need to know when to take a break to figure out what the law is. Uh, but some of it is just good old fashioned common sense and we're really lucky in Minnesota that, you know, regardless of who our governor is and r which party he or she belongs to, our governors generally have appointed very good district court judges and I'm very proud of that.